His entire life is gone. He'll be there till he's nearly 80 years old. For a thousand dollars of marijuana, it just doesn't make sense. This is a problem with the system. My name is Lisa Angelos, and I am from Sandy, Utah. My brother is Weldon Angelos. The neighborhood that we grew up in, we just ran across, you know, a lot of rough crowds. We didn't have decent clothes. We were on food stamps. My dad did everything he could to take care of us. And Weldon struggled with, you know, the fact that we were so poor. So he worked really hard, and he knew he wanted to go into music. Music was a big part of his life, and I think he would have been huge if he never went to prison. Back in 2003, he was arrested for marijuana charges and with carrying a weapon during the transactions. was a nonviolent first time offender. Weldon's judge even said that it was cruel punishment. And when I heard it, he was going to be gone for 55 years, it felt like I just lost my brother. It didn't feel like, oh, he's going to prison. It literally felt like I lost him. Like, you know, he had passed. His two boys were five and seven. They were just destroyed. I mean, you could see the sadness in them all the time. If my dad doesn't get out and he finishes up his all 55 years, he'll be like 78 years old when he gets out. I think it's cruel and like, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve anything, but he did serve his time, and I think he's in there long enough. Like, the minimum should have been, like, five years, maybe. 55 years is way too much. Way too much. You know, it's not easy growing up without a father. There's always still that emptiness and the missing piece. It's kind of tough, but they, they struggle pretty hard. I love you, buddy. And if I don't get a chance to talk to you, I'll call you uh, Tuesday. But I love you so much and miss you. Right. Love you, too. Miss you, too. Let me say hi to Jesse. All right, here. Here's old Pops. What's up, What's up Pops? What's up, little dude? <laughs> no, little, little dude, I'm probably bigger than you now. What are you talking about? I know you are. <laughs> How tall are you now? Um, like almost like 5'10. I seen the pictures, I was like, oh my kids are monsters. <laughs> be careful, man. You and your brother I know. be careful and look out for each other, you guys. Yeah, we know. We will. Don't get in trouble. Right now, we're just waiting and hoping for that call. Like, every time something happens, like, if I get a call from someone wanting an interview or wanting this, I have this tiny little piece inside that's saying, oh, they want to do an interview because they're going to surprise me and Weldon's coming home. And I know deep down that that's not it, but I always have that little shred of hope that that's why an interview is coming. Um, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I try not to tear up. Sometimes it's hard. It, it doesn't make sense to lock someone up for the rest of their life when they didn't hurt anybody. I mean, he was such a good person, and my family needs him. This isn't just about Weldon's case. This is a problem with the system. 
there's thousands and thousands of people that shouldn't be locked up, that should be home with their families. We need to change the system to where the punishment actually fits the crime and where local judges can actually make decisions based on their own discretion. I guess I will talk to you maybe, maybe hopefully tomorrow if I have okay, any well left. <laughs> All right, well then Matt says no. hi, well done. Oh, tell him I said hi. He says hi. Miss you, buddy. He said miss you, buddy. Oh, I miss him too, love you guys, and I'll talk to you guys uh, soon. All right, love you too, Weldy. I'll never stop until he does come home. No matter how draining it is, no matter how tiring it is, because I can't imagine how much more draining and more tiring it is for him and for his children. That's what my father taught me. When it's family, you give everything that you got because that's what families do.